Today I'm going to build upon what Pastor Jessica has been preaching last week. How many of you are blessed um, last week? Come on, she was preaching about, are you a crowd or are you a disciple? Right? Yeah, that, that was one of the very first time that we boldly just announced that this is the kind of church. SEWC is a discipleship kind of church, right? Today I want to build upon what Pastor Jessica has preached last week. How many of you understand that know that God never saved us to be crowd? But God saved you and me to move from crowd to be disciple of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. God never called us to build a church full of baby Christians. Oh, come on, change my nappies. Come on, pastor, preach better. Come on, somebody, give me, give me, give me. But we, we are building a church that is rising an army of disciple makers that are going to change the world. Come on, somebody. It's really, really good. You know, come on, if you believe it, shout amen. amen. Now, this morning, I'm going to build upon it. I'm going to go higher. No pun intended. But I'm going to go higher, you know. Um, and, and I'm going to entitle this message, Will You Climb With Me? Okay? Will You Climb With Me? You know, time and, time and after time, Jesus, every single time, Jesus come to His disciples, Jesus come to um, the crowds, He's going to ask the same question. This question is not from Pastor Roy, not from Pastor Jess, but this is from Jesus that says, Will you climb with me? Let's open our Bible in Matthew 5, verse 1 to 2. You know, Matthew 5, verse 1 to 2 says this. Listen to this carefully. 1, 2, 3. When he saw the crowd, he went up to the mountain. And listen to this carefully. Those who were apprenticed to him, those who are committed, climb with him. Arriving at a quiet place when the, 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 the crowd saying, oh, okay, I, I, I'm going to stay here. But the disciples comes in. Arriving at the quiet place, they sat down. He sat down and thought, taught his climbing companion. How many of you uh, want to be Jesus' climbing companion this weekend? Come on, somebody. So good. You know, the more I learn this, you know, the more I learn this, the more I understand that Jesus, I don't know about Jesus' obsession, but Jesus loves to bring everybody on top of the mountain, right? If you read the Bible, the more you read the Bible, you understand that Jesus has got this obsession to just bring everybody on top of the mountain. You know, in fact, the major things that happen in the Bible always happen in the mountain. In on top of Mount Sinai is the very first time when God gave the Ten Commandments. It, on top of the Mount Ararat is the uh, top on top where, where the, 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 the ship of Noah is actually rested. They, on, when, when Moses was, was saying, come on, man, come on, give me an answer, give me an answer. Jesus says, hey, you want your answer? Come and meet me on top of the mountain. You know, when Abraham and Isaac, uh, 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 and Abraham is actually about to sacrifice Isaac, Abraham says that on top of this mountain, the Lord provides. Everything, major things happen on top of the mountain. In fact, Jesus revealed himself in the transfiguration to James, John, and Peter on top of the mountain. Everything ha happens on top of the mountain. You know, I don't know about you, but if you can't see in my body, I am not a climber. I am not a mountain climber. I'm not fit as Grant. I'm not fit as, as Wilson. I am, I, I still love lechon and a little bit of sisic and pork and things like that. I love my food. So every time I can go, I can, I can run fast. I can go to the gym for 15 minutes, but endurance is not my greatest gift, right? I cannot climb mountain. I remember the time where I have to climb this mountain called Mount Bromo. How many of you understand, uh, uh, have been to Mount Bromo? Okay. Now, I, I remember, I don't know about you, but in case, uh, I love nature. I love taking great photos. I love nature. But I am not a climber. I hate climbing, especially climbing mountain. I remember the time where we actually go to Mount Bromo. We as a family, we have to wake up at 3 o'clock, right? We have to wake up at 3 o'clock just to catch the sunrise. How many of you, come on, man, help me preach today. How many of you have been, you know, climbing a mountain? You have to wake up at 3 o'clock. 
You know, we, we didn't have a sleep, enough sleep, but as a family, we have to wake up at 3 o'clock. So I said, oh, my God, I don't like this. Why is it? And my dad kept saying to me, hey, come on, man. This is a family bonding. we on top of the mountain. We're going to love one another and things like that. This is a very brilliant idea, okay? So we, we wake up, woke up at 3 o'clock, and let me tell you, to my surprise, there is uh, uh, four um, Jeep Cherokee, four-wheel drive that actually took us from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain. And I said, this is not a bad idea. This is not a bad idea overall. We, it's, it's, okay, it's a bit bumpy, but I don't need to walk. I was so happy. I said, yeah, this is a good family bonding. High five, Dad. This is such a good, good, good idea. Until the moment the tour guide, I still remember his face, I hate him, but he, he actually turned off the engine and said, all right, this is about as far as the four-wheel drive can take you. From this point onwards, we're going to continue the journey on foot. I said, come again. Is it my foot or your foot? Because my foot is not happening, man. Seriously, you know, in case, and I said, I said to him, in case you don't see, I'm Indonesian, I'm Asian. When we say we're going to climb on top of the mountain, what we are really saying is that we're going to climb on the uh, lookout point, right? And then we, we, we give selfie, and the, the mountain is at the back, and then bingo, post it in Facebook, and we go back to our hotel. That's basically Asian version of climbing the mountain. Come on, somebody. But you know what? That idea disappeared. We had to track for three hours in the pitch darkness of night. Let me tell you, we fall, we fell, we slip, we argue from, from what's supposed to be romantic, what's supposed to be a family bonding. We argue, we complain. I told you this is not a good idea. My mom says, why on earth have you got this brilliant idea? Oh, come on. Everybody was like, everybody was just like blaming and things like that. The air was thin on top. You can't breathe on top. You know, you see your family member, oh my God, I swear to God, I saw my, my granddad. I, I, let me tell you, my granddad was like 80 years old and he walked into the, the Mount Bromo. Like, come on, that's a stupid idea, right? Seriously, she, he was going like, <sighs> if the leg can scream, the leg was going, <sighs> and my dad says, Okay, dad, okay, dad, you stay here. We stay here. I, I, I'll see when we came back. You know, our, our family just, just killed. You just live one by one. You just go like, yep, you're gone. Yep, you're gone. And yep, you're gone. You know, isn't it interesting that there's something about altitude that will always reveal your attitude? Come on, somebody. That's good. Jesus loves taking disciples to make a climb on top of the mountain. In fact, you know, you know, I said, God, why? Why do you really love taking all your crowds on top of the mountain? Let me tell you why. Because the climb, what climb does is actually the climb separates. Everybody shout separates. separates. The climb separates between the crowd and the real disciples. The climb separates those who want him for his blessing to those who follow him because he really wants to get close to him. The climb, this climb, is actually separates those who are really committed to him or those who will follow him only when the ben it benefits them. Come on, God. I'm going to follow you as long as you bless my business. I'm going to follow you as long as there is no storm coming in my life. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm committed to you, God. I'm going to follow you. But this climb, literally, when the air gets thin, when everything gets harder, this climb actually separates between the crowd and disciple. That is why God loves to bring and ask this question, will you climb up with me? In fact, the more I learn, I'm, I feel like preaching today, that it seems... That throughout the Bible, you know, Jesus' greatest messages was preached on top of the mountain. You know, uh, uh, below, 
below the, the, at the foot of the mountain, he used riddles, he used stories, and he used like uh, 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 stories and parables. It confuses people. But you know what? The more, the higher up you go, Jesus' greatest messages is actually reserved at the top of the mountain. What if I'm preaching to you today that your greatest blessing, your greatest revelation, your greatest healing is not on the foot of the mountain. It's actually on top of this mountain. But the Bible also says that there is a direct connection. Come on, somebody. Come on, help me preach today. But there is a direct connection between what's happening on top of the mountain, on top of this mountain. Maybe you say to me, Pastor Roy, what is this, the climbing of the mountain? How does this climbing of this mountain topic help me on my Monday to Saturday? Let me tell you why. You know what? There is a direct connection between what's happening on top of this mountain with happening on the foot of the mountain. The Bible says when Moses is actually climbing up the mountain and when he surrendered his life, when he lift up his hand, you know what? When he surrendered his life and when he surrendered his war and when he surrendered his battle on top of his mountain, he surrendered with God. God, I cannot do it by myself. At the same time, you know, the war, God is fighting for his battle. There is a direct connection between what you do on top of this mountain and what you have at the at the behind on top on the foot of this mountain come on church it's like he's saying to you and me that your greatest blessing Come on, somebody. It's on top of this mountain. Your greatest healing is at the end of the climb. Oh, come on, somebody clap like you are about to go higher this morning. Church, this answer to your prayer cannot be found at the foot of the mountain. You, we've been looking at the wrong places. That money can't give you the joy that you're after. You know that bloke on that bar cannot give you the love that, that you're after. Your healing, your victory, money can't give that. Your job can't give that. Your boss can't give that. This morning, God is asking our church, church, would you climb up with me? Is there anybody in this church who's going to say, Pastor Roy, I'm going to climb with you. Jesus, I'm going to climb up. You know, this climb represents a call to discipleship. This, this, this climb right here, this mountain right here, this ladder right here, every single step is basically represent a call from God to you of a call. It's a, it's, it's, it's a call to discipleship. Will you climb with me, Peter? Caroline, will you climb with me? Ari, Rana, will you climb with me? Roland Sheila, will you climb with me? Ewan, Felisa, will, will you climb with me? God is saying, will you climb up with me? The Bible says that those, not everybody wants to climb. So surprising, I don't know about you, but I would love if Jesus come right here, right now, and says, Roy, I want you to climb higher. I said, man, let's go. When are we climbing? But let me tell you, there are not many people who want to make that climb. The Bible says those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, only the committed, those are the one who wants to climb with me. Not everybody's saying to yes, but some says, God, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be crowd. You love the crowd, right? You die for the crowd. I'm cool. I'm just going to wait until you come back. But, but you see, don't get me wrong. God loves the crowd. God dies for the crowd. But listen to this. God loves you too much to let you stay on the foot of that mountain. You know what? You know, because there are things that are reserved on top of this mountain. There are th things. It's like it's a, it's, a, it's a wine that was reserved. Only you can't open this bottle of wine, but this bottle of wine is reserved. This blessing is reserved on top of this mountain. This, this morning, I want to share with you three promises that are reserved for those who climb with Jesus. Maybe you ask, how can being a disciple of Jesus help me with my Monday and Saturday? I hope this preaching is going to speak into your life today. I'm going to speak to you about three promises of God that awaits at the end of your climb. Are you ready? Yes. Promise number one. Everybody shout number one. The higher you climb, the higher your perspective. The higher you climb. How many of you understand? But the higher you climb, I couldn't see at the back. I, I couldn't see people at the back. But the higher I climb, I can see everything. 
I can see everything. Hey, I love your shirt, man. I can see everything. Because the higher you climb, the higher your perspective. You know, I remember the time where we as a couple, we went to a, a muse museum called the Louvre Museum. You know, the Louvre Museum is actually just a museum in, in, in Paris, Paris, right? In Paris, that is packed with art, artwork, masterpieces, right? But there is this, this art that stand out about the rest. You know why? Because it's huge. It's literally 10 meters wide and 6.2 meters high. If you uh, 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 want it, I've got a picture right here. That's basically how big the coronation of Napoleon artwork is actually in Paris. The rest is just, yeah, big, but it's, it's dwarf on the size of the coronation of Napoleon. You know what? The, the thing that's interesting is that not just not just the, um, the size, but it's the details. And you know what? Me and Jessica is not really good into art, so what we did is just, wow, so many details. So we saw, so we saw it up, up close, and we have gotten no clue what's going on. Why? Because when you stand too close, you can only see pieces. You see disconnected events, you don't understand. So and I said, okay, maybe the answer is actually at the top. So we went to the, uh, look at the top, but there is a disconnection. So we were frustrated. But the tour guide is actually can see the frustration in our life. And he said, no, 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 hang on, hang on. That's not the way you see the coronation of Napoleon. You have to climb up to the second level, go back a step, and you'll, be un you'll understand what the artist is actually trying to convey. Now this is basically what the coronation of Napoleon looks like. I gotta be honest with you. We went, we went to the higher perspective, we went to level two, we saw it as a wow. I still don't understand. <laughs> I'm just kidding, right? But at least I see everything. Come on somebody. We can't teach a Jamborean. Come on somebody. To understand Napoleon, you know. Life is like a huge painting. Trying to understand life with ups and downs, without a higher perspective from God. All you see is just confusion, disconnected events, and it can bring overwhelmingly depressing and anxiety to compare to our small brain. We can't, we can't see it. I just don't get it. Why did I have to go through this breakup of marriage? Why did I have to go through this, this, this uh, uh, demotion? Why did I, what did I do wrong, God? I, I, I couldn't believe it. You know, everybody got the, their visa. I can't do it. You know, everybody is blessed. They don't love God. But trying to understand life without the higher perspective will kill you. That's why we wonder what is God up to with this. But this morning, God is asking you, if you come here today, with that kind of depression, anxiety, and then you don't know where to go, and things like that, God is asking you, will you climb up with me? Will you climb up with me? You know, that's why God is this, this morning asking you, everybody, will you climb up with me? Will you stay here as a crowd, or will you come up with me to be my disciples? Because the higher you go, the higher your perspective in life. Come on, somebody. The higher you go, the more God will give you His perspective. All of a sudden, the peace of God, come on, somebody, started to dominate your heart. All of a sudden, your heart will overflow with gratitude. You said, all of a sudden, the higher you go, you said, it was painful then. When He left me, I ended up eating all the three tubs of ice cream and then watches all this crash landing on you for three, three consecutive, you know, days. You know what? It was painful before. But now that I climb up to God, I can see higher perspective. I know that all the rejection, all this rejection is only a protection. Come on, somebody, help me preach it today. You know, all this detour, closed door, it was all His protection all along. We say, God, thank you, Lord. I thank God for this. Oh, come on, somebody, I'm preaching. Who, who am I preaching today? We say to God, God, I'm stronger because of this. God, thank God I am more mature because of this. The higher you go in life, the higher perspective you'll see in life. 
That's the first promise that God gave those who will climb with Him. You see, the higher you go, your past didn't change. You still broken up. You, you still got hurt at that time. Your past didn't change. But you see what changed? Your perspective changed. You say, God, thank you, Lord. How many of you thank God that you made that climb? How many of you thank God that somebody pushed you to come to LOF? I wouldn't be here if I wasn't, because, because, not because of the Word of God. You know, you, I may not be where I want to be, but I just want to say thank God that I'm not where I used to be. Come on, somebody. Praise God like what He has done and about to do in your life. Somebody shout, climb higher! The higher you go with God, the higher your perspective in life. Number two, the second promise that is reserved, not at the bottom, but at the top of the mountain, is when you climb, first you'll gain a higher perspective. Second one, you're going to live higher on a higher ground. You're going to live a higher living. Maybe some of you says, okay, what is that supposed to mean? What is higher living? Let me explain to you, okay? I'm going to do an illustration, you know? I'm going to compete with Pastor Juan Mogi. Juan Mogi is always give like all the illustration and things like, come on, I'm just joking. Come on, somebody. It was not funny at all. Come on, somebody. <laughs> all right. You know, the second promise that reserved for the disciples is when you climb, you have a higher living, okay? When you follow God, I'm speaking to somebody. God has never promised a life full of sunshine and rainbows. In life, everybody, sometimes in your life, I don't care who you are, I don't care how successful you are, sometimes in your life, you go through what I call storm. You go through this thing called storm in life. Turn up the volume, baby. I need support. Come on, turn it up, turn it up. Sometimes in life, there are times in your life where the wind is going to blow stronger. The Bible didn't say, Jesus never say, you know, Jesus never say, if the storm comes. But the Jesus, Jesus always says, when storm comes. Storm is part of life. Storm is part of following Jesus. There are times in your life where your sea is roaring even higher. And most of the time, let me tell you, it's not your fault, man. It's not your fault. But all of a sudden, it's not because God is angry at you. It's not because of that. It's just storm is part of life. God warned us, warned you for this. In life, storm will come. All of a sudden, you got a new boss. You've worked so hard, but all of a sudden, you got a new boss. All of a sudden, that boss really hated you. All of a sudden, market is slowing down. Not your fault. Restructure happened, entrenchment happened, sickness happened in your family, relationship breakdown. But, and what happened during storm, we usually duck. We duck. We give in to this weather. We give in to the pressure. We give in to the anxiety. We say, let's not follow God anymore. This climb is what's causing it. This climb, the more, the more we climb, the more the attack. But let me tell you, partially it's true. But partially, God has already told you that storm will come in your life. We can't control it. It's not because you trigger it. Nothing. Nobody trigger it. It's just part of life. Storm will come to your life. You know, some of you are here understand what I meant by storm of life. Storm will come. But church, what if I told you that you were never called to live under the storm? What if I, I told you that you're never called to live under the weather of fear, under the weather of depression? What if I called you, you, you never created, you never called to live under the weather of defeat? What if you're always called to live above the storm? 
You know, some of you are about to give up. Some of you are saying, no, 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 no. But God's saying, don't stop climbing. Climb higher. Come on, climb higher. Climb higher. But, but God, this storm, this storm is getting, getting even worse. This storm is getting even worse. There you go. The sound, sound came back, right? The storm is getting even worse. Come on, fun. And then you're just drenching. But God's saying, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Just keep climbing. Keep, keep climbing. But God, I, I cannot do this anymore. Keep climbing, Peter. Keep climbing, Carolyn. Keep climbing. Keep climbing. Until God bring you to a point where you live on top of that storm. There is peace on top of that storm. You know, your sea is still raging underneath. But there is peace on top of that crown. What if I told you that you were never called to live and give in to the power? That's not your portion. Come on, somebody help me preach today. I cannot jump because I am a bit scared. But let me tell you, let me tell you that, 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 that. Oh, come on, somebody. Depression is never your portion. Come on, lack is never your portion. Fear is never your portion. But you know what? You are called to live above the storm. Somebody shout, I'm going to climb higher. Hold. <laughs> Hold, Jesus. Take the wheel. Higher perspective. Higher living. Let me tell you one thing. In SEWC, we are intentional in terms of keep calling people. Will you climb with Jesus? Will you climb higher? You know, in SEWC, that this is, this ladder is literally this ladder. And everybody in this place has got their next step. Maybe you came here, you've knew, you know, every year we have literally 500 to 600 new people coming to our church. If you come here as a newcomer, you know, what is your next step? The next step is very simple. The next step is called the next step. <laughs> that is so deep, right? Wow, we got to better change that name, brother. Come on. Your next step is the next step. What is the next step? The next step is going to happen literally today. So if you're new, you don't know the vision and mission of this church, you've never been baptized, you never don't know what is following God for and things like that. We have two week classes, but because we are so packed, we're going to do an express one by the end of this service. Only one week of next step. There you're going to learn about what is the importance of baptism. If you're not baptized, water baptized yet, that is your next step. If you're sitting here, you haven't served God in any capacity, that is your next step. You know, for water baptism, right now there are eight people, but I'm believing for more people than saying, God, I want to make my private declaration public. I want to follow you, God. Come on, that is your next step. But if you said, I, I've been a Christian, you know, I've been water baptized, I've been serving and things like that, what is your next step? Your next step is basically joining a connect group. Joining in connect group, life is never designed to be lived alone. You can never do it. You can never climb by yourself. You need somebody to support you. You need somebody to love you. You need somebody to care for you. You need somebody, you know, there is storm in life and you need somebody to hold your hands. And that is connect group. Connect group is where the discipleship journey begins in our church. But let me tell you, that's where the discipleship begins. You want to go higher? You come to lifestyle of freedom. You know, a lot of us, a lot of you, I know, some of you says, I'm busy. I get it. You know, if you think about it, this climb will take time. This climb will take time. Can I have the multimedia? This climb, first it will take time. Yes, 
you're going to have less time, slightly two hours less time with your family, two hours less time with your work. This time will take a lot of sacrifice. will take a lot of commitment. There are times where you don't want to come. There are times where you say, oh, I, I don't feel like it. But this climb with Jesus, it takes commitment. This climb will take a lot of sacrifice. Some of you could work. I get it. But let me tell you one thing. In just a moment, we're going to hear a story from one of our leaders called Algen. And she's going to share a story when you, she climbs up higher and higher in love. Come on. Why don't we stand up and honor Algen? She's a bit nervous. But come on, somebody. Come on, hear it one more time. For Algen, God bless you. Hi, good morning. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Algen, and this is my story. Since I was young, I always had a dream to come to Australia for a better life. I don't know why, but every time I see someone posted something on Facebook about Australia, my heart would just leap. On 2nd of January 2019, my dream came true when I arrived in Sydney. The plan is to establish myself and get myself settled first before I go and come bring my family over, my husband and my daughter. To be honest, the first thing that I wanted to do when I arrived is to find a church where I can be discipled and grow. So one day, my flatmate, Atameth, bless her, he invited me to come to see Saturday service. And straight away, just from the door, I felt like I have a family in Sydney. Fiesta every Saturday, guys. But my heart was still searching for more. I longed for a deeper relationship in getting to know more about God. Last year, Pastor Ed invited me to join our Wednesday discipleship called Lifestyle of Freedom. Just the first session, it blew my mind. And I told to myself, wow, this is exactly what I was looking for. Back then, I was living in Penrith. It's one and a half hours, one way to get that discipleship. One and a half hours. I know it's far, but I know that I need to be there. I need to be there at all costs. You know why? Every week I was strengthened so much through the teaching. And my coach then was Sister Glenda. Yeah, Friday. I learned to conquer the battle in my mind. Every session, my faith was being challenged. I felt so encouraged every time I hear other people's testimonies and experiences. Then after nine months of praying and working out ways to get my family here, God delivered the breakthrough. After nine months separated from my family, September 27th last year, there was the day my whole family was reunited. Today I picked them up at Sydney Airport. I couldn't hold my tears and the gratitude is just flowing out of my heart. I said to myself, my joy is full. But life happens. And now we have greater financial needs with my husband and my daughter around. I have to juggle study and taking extra jobs at night to make ends meet. I was so devastated that I cannot be at Wednesday nights for life, Lifestyle of Freedom anymore because of my night shift job at Coles. Until December last year, during Connect Group, Pastor Roy shared about sons and daughters that we have been given the power and the authority to carry God's heart and vision to save souls and to make disciples. God convicted me at that point about my purpose and calling. I really broke down at that moment. And I was sharing with Pastor Jess and she challenged me, AJ, if you want that, go ask God for it. She said, if you have the right desire, if your heart is to serve God and be a kingdom builder and kingdom provider, if you ask God for it, He will surely open doors and fulfill your desire. So I did exactly did that. I just couldn't trade it. And early this year, I took that leap of faith. It was so hard for me to resign a stable paying night job that really has a good pay. But God is truly faithful. With one interview, I got offered into a daytime call center job that now allows me to connect group, 
to go to Lifestyle of Freedom while also having some time to spend with my family in the evening. Come on, church. God is good. Amen. And I truly cannot wait to go back to Lifestyle of Freedom. And guess what? I'm going to do that with my husband. Yeah. So today, if you're thinking about it, let me tell you. Discipleship is no small thing. It has changed my life. It restored my relationship with God. It equipped me in so many practical ways from managing your finances to prioritizing your family. Yes, it's not easy. Yes, it will take extra time and effort and sacrifice. But I want to tell you, the climb is worth it. The climb is worth it. So I just want to ask you, will you make the climb with me? Again, my name is Aljan. I want to be discipled, and this is my story. Come on, give it up for Aljan. So good. Would you remain standing? I'm going to close. Remain standing. I'm going to close. You know, this call, will you climb with me? It's been given so many times. And there is a, a part of the Bible that says, not everybody wants to come. It's cool. You know, the Bible says, but they are all alike and begin to make excuses. The first one says, I've just bought a field. I must go and see it. Please excuse me. I've just got a new business card. I can't go. I'm busy. And to other, Jesus says, come on, climb up with me. And another says, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. I've got a new job, new career. Please excuse me. And then God says to another person, says, will you climb up with me? And still another says, I just got married. So I can't come. My family, I've got kids. My kids, all of them are still babies. I can't come. But time and time again, God is asking you and me, will you climb with me? And the response is in your hands. Me as a preacher of the word, I'm going to throw the same invitation. Will you climb together with me to the top of this mountain? You know, in life, we can climb higher or you can make excuses. But we can never have both. The higher you go, the higher you go, listen to this, the higher you go, the higher your perspective. The higher you go, the more you understand that that's, that's cool. I, I can deal with it. Why? Because you get stronger. You can start to live a higher life but last but not least the third promise that is reserved for people that wants to climb higher is that you will receive power from the higher crown you are going to receive power from the higher ground you know the Bible says that Jesus came back Jesus came back by the the spirit jesus was f f fasting for 40 days and 40 nights full fast and the bible says that when he came back oh come on somebody shot came back come on somebody shot came back he came back by the power of the holy ghost oh come on church help me preach today that as you climb higher to god that i i, I came and decree and declare to you that you gonna come back with the power of the holy spirit you know what i want and declare to you that you're gonna come back and you're gonna face the Goliath that robbed your joy the same devil that robbed your family the same devil that the same enemy that tried to kill you you're gonna come back with the power come on somebody of the Holy Ghost somebody shall come back somebody shall come back come on you're gonna come back with different power now this time you said, bah, bah, bah. I've tried, I've tried coming back to that power, but man, 
I keep getting on defeated but let me tell you maybe you've been coming back with the wrong power but let me tell you as you go up God will give you power from the holy ground God give you power from a higher ground Jesus will come back with the power of the Spirit so you as a son and daughter come on somebody where's my discipleship oh Jesus come back we can't stay here we gotta move we can't stay here we gotta keep moving we can't stay here we gotta keep moving but, but, but it's it's hard it's hard it's it, 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 getting harder but keep climbing keep climbing the, the higher you go you can see oh god thank god thank god i didn't marry this guy thank god thank god he left me thank god i didn't get that job thank god for everything the, the higher you go the higher your perspective the higher you go the higher your life will be the higher you go you will receive power somebody shall power somebody shall power